the review of solving some simple equations that you'll see in applications uh, using our exponential rules and our logarithmic rules and the fact that they're inverses. All right, so the first example is actually a simple one, but sometimes it's the simple cases that really trip students up. So I've got e raised to the natural log of x equals e raised to the fourth. If you remember one of the last properties was the inverse property, which means this expression here, e raised to the natural log of x, the e and the natural log function, base e, undo another, and so this side actually simplifies to x. And then the other side doesn't change. Right? The one side simplifies the x, the other side stays e to the fourth. And so the expression simplifies to x is equal to e to the fourth. And then you could type that into the, your, your calculator. e raised to the fourth is going to give me a fairly, not a super large number. So e raised to the fourth comes out about 54.598 if I give it a few decimal places. All right, and that's what that expression is. Now, the second example. All right, so what you always do with exponential and logarithmic functions is first thing you do is solve for the e term or natural log term. All right, so depending on which equation you have. So in this equation, I've got an e raised to the negative 1 half, 1 half x. So the first thing I'm going to do is solve for the e term. So divide by 14, divide by 14. So on this side, I get 1 7th equals e raised to the negative 1 half x. <coughs> then use the uniqueness property. I have to get rid of e. Well, the only way to get rid of the e function is to use its inverse, the natural log. And so I'm going to take the natural log of both sides, right? Whatever I do to one side of an equation, I have to do the other. And so I have to take the natural log of the 1 7th side, the natural log of the e term side. And what happens there is, well, the natural log of 1 7th stays natural log of 1 7th. But this was the goal. I wanted to get rid of the e. The only way to get rid of the e is to use its inverse, the natural number, natural, not natural number, natural log. And so those two things undo each and do each other and it's going to leave me with the number negative one half or the expression negative one half x and then from there you just solve like you would solve any other equation you get rid of the number in front of the x by dividing it out so x is exactly the natural log of one half over not one half one seventh divided by negative one half and then find the decimal approximation uh, 3.89 if I round a couple decimal places all right, next example. So I've got 2e to the x plus 1 minus 5. So again, first thing, isolate the e term. So follow order of operations. The first thing I'm going to do is move the 5 over. So I get 2e to the x plus 1 equals 12. Divide out the 2. So e to the x plus 1 equals 6. Now I'm going to use the logarithmic rule. I'm going to go over here and do that. So I take the natural log of the e side. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other. So I get the natural log of 6. Over here, the e and the natural log undo each other, leave me with just the x plus 1 expression. Natural number, natural log of 6. You want to say natural number. Natural log of 6 is just a number. It's an ugly number like the square root of 2, but it's just a number. And so to solve for x, I then my last step is to subtract 1. So x is exactly the natural log of 6 minus 1. And then you can plug the natural log of 6 into your calculator. Subtract 1 from it and find the decimal approximation. So it comes out to 0.79 if I just round a couple places. All right, this example, D is a little more complex, right? E is buried in this fraction. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of the fraction. And so what I have to do is I have to multiply everything, both sides, by that denominator. So that x plus 1 e to the negative 0.3x. Again, I'm going to multiply both sides. Excuse me. So on this side, I get 100 times that expression. And on this side, the reason why I did that is it gets rid of the fraction. I'm just left with 200 on that side. Now it's a little more manageable. I got rid of the fraction. And so now I isolate. So divide out by 100 first. So 1 plus 3e to the negative 0.3x equals 2. Subtract 1, so 3 equals negative 0.3x equals 1. Divide by that 3, and I finally get the expression I want. E, by itself, 
So e to the negative 0.3x equals one third. Take the natural log of both sides. And here I'm left with point, negative 0.3x equals the natural log of 1 third, and then divide out by that negative 0.3. So x is exactly the natural log of 1 third divided by negative 0.3, and then you use your calculator to find the decimal approximate, which comes out 2 point, I think, 2.31, about for around two decimal places. All right, so that one was a little more complex. All right, that one took us a little of unbearing to get done. All right, but we were able to isolate the E term, use the natural log rule, and get us to the X term. All right, the next example. There's actually a couple ways to solve the next one. I'm gonna write a little bigger because I think it's small there. Uh, you could use the change of base formula. Rewrite this as the log base two of X and then the change of base formula, and that's one way you can solve it. And if you solve it that way, that's fine. Um, I'm actually going to use the natural log rule. All right, so even though this is not a base E, I can still use the natural log to solve it. And so what I am going to do, I'm going to take the natural, I've isolated the, the, the exponential term, right? There's nothing to be done there to the X is already all by itself. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides, right? Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other side. I'm going to use that third rule, right? If I've got this exponent here, I could pull that up front. And so I can get x times the natural log of 2 equals the natural log of 24. The natural log of 2 is just a number, like the square root of 2. An irrational number, but it's just a number. And so to get rid of that multiplication, well, we divide. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. And so x is exactly the natural log of 24 over the natural log of 2, which is what I would have got had I used that change of base rule, and then plug it into the calculator to find the approximate number, which comes out to be 4.58. All right, so, those are, so the first examples are all exponential cases. Now we're going to get into the logarithmic cases. All right, but the same process applies with the logarithm. Isolate the logarithm and use its inverse. So 4 times the natural log of x equals 20. We'll first then get rid of the 4. Multiply, so to get rid of it, we divide. So I've got the natural log of x equals 5. And then I can take raised to, remember it's raised to, it's the natural log, it's e raised to the natural log. And so I have to do the same thing to the other side. It's e raised to the 5. So they both go up in the exponent, right, because it's the exponential function. And so over here, well, that reduces to x. This is e to the fifth, and I can type e to the fifth into my calculator, find what it is approximately. And so it comes out 148.41, if I run a couple decimal places. I have a last example. So again, natural log, I've got to isolate it. So first step, move the 200 to the other side. So I've got 30 times the natural log of x equals 800. Divide by the 30, and again, don't round until the end of the problem. So either leave it 800 divided by 3, or you can at least reduce that fraction to 80 over 3. But do not write the decimal, because you'll be significantly off if you... So leave exact, otherwise you'll have a rounding error. Because my next step is to take the exponent and raise it to both sides. So I've got e raised to the 80 divided by 3. If you wrote the decimal approximate, you would be off that many times. Because remember, it's, it's e raised to that means it's that e times itself that many times. And so you'd be significantly off that many times, all right, multiplying it out that many times. All right, so do not round that. Leave it exact. So x is exactly e to the 80 divided by 3. That's all up in the exponent. And then, again, make sure you put that whole thing in parentheses when you put, raise it to the E. So it would be 80 divided by 3 up top. So it's about 3.812 by around a few decimal places. Which, again, this should be a review. All of the stuff that I've kind of talked about today, I've kind of just wanted to hit one more time for you. A quick review of some of the important things you need to know about exponentials and logarithms. The properties, their graphs domains and ranges, and then how to solve simple equations of them, because that's stuff we're going to have to do. 
All right, in the next one, we are going to get a little more into the domain of logs. Exponential domain's easy. It's all real. So the logarithmic one is the one you have to be careful of. And I'm going to pick that up in the next video.